Well, good morning, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Um, the severe weather threat, I know, is on many of our minds uh, right now, and um, completely understandable. We're one day away from the potential event now, and I wanted to bring you up to speed sort of on the latest thinking of... Um, of what we can expect for tomorrow. Obviously, this is not the ideal time to have severe weather when you have uh, kiddos out potentially trick-or-treating. Uh, whenever you could have a squall line coming through, this is not a good thing. I know many communities have already delayed um, their um, trick-or-treating until Friday. Some have moved it up till Wednesday. Uh, frankly, if there are any, uh, any government officials that are in charge of that viewing this video, I would just encourage you to move it. Uh, I think tomorrow night is just going to be a terrible night to do trick-or-treating, and the last thing that we want to do is have kids out whenever there's a chance of severe weather rolling through. Uh, and even if we don't get um, a major severe weather outbreak from this, uh, the sustained winds tomorrow are going to be from 10 to 25 miles an hour, gusting 35, 40 at times. And that's just, you know, that, that alone is enough to knock some tree branches down by itself, even though it's below certainly below severe criteria so it's going to be windy and just a nasty day for the kids kiddos ridiculously so let's dive into the data and let's kind of understand the the biggest part of what's going on now this is a graphic i posted uh, on saturday if you've been following our facebook page on southern indiana weather if you follow these videos um, you know now for almost a week uh, I have been keeping you informed about what's going on with this, and uh, I know um, some of the, the media outlets have tried to downplay this, and I've even heard some of the, uh, the media outlets on their, on their uh, blogs and things say, well, uh, this, this may not be that bad, but uh, uh, I've been saying for days, yes, this could be bad, and uh, I know there are some question marks with it, but it's looking bad, and uh, the morning data has uh, now come in, and uh, it's looking worse than it did yesterday, so uh, keep in mind, you know, I, I warned you guys on, on Saturday about this, and uh, just give you an idea of, uh, of um, how the thinking has, has gone around, I, I kind of outlined this area in green as a potential for severe weather on Saturday. Here's what the Storm Prediction Center in their latest thinking is saying, and uh, you know, that's, that's not bad uh, overall, and uh, um, I, it, I still think that could extend a little bit more into northern Indiana. If you go to the Storm Prediction Center's website, you can see their day two outlook here. You can see they've air, they have uh, outlined this particular area with slight risk. If you just mouse over the probabilistic uh, one, you can see their probabilities, and that is essentially uh, what I have done in this particular graphic. Essentially what this means is it's probability of severe weather happening within 25 miles of any given point. So uh, pretty much all of our coverage area is under that 30% probability where a 15% covers everything else. And a 15% probability or greater is at least a slight risk of severe weather. 30% is an upper end slight risk, but still a slight risk. And then the next step up from that is a moderate risk, which starts at 45% high risk starts at 60 percent so as far as for severe wind gusts and things and uh, maybe I'll do a future video later on down the line sometime about how those classify uh, are classified because I know that can be a little confusing but just understand that when we're under a slight risk for severe weather basically what we're saying is there's there's a at least a slight chance that that we can have severe weather within 25 miles of any given point around that hatched area and the probabilities increase uh, obviously the more you go up in the percentages here so that's at least a 30 percent shot that we can see something severe with that it's what it's saying as far as timing on this i believe likely the storms the severe parts of the storms will be after 4 p.m timing varies by models we'll time it out here in a second impact wise um tornadoes i think the threat has increased a little bit yesterday i had a low threat i've increased that to medium i don't see this ever becoming a high threat unless things drastically change um, now the lower threat for tornadoes may be up here more in uh, central Indiana, uh, but certainly I would say in maybe this area uh, down here we may have more of a medium threat for tornadoes uh, because of the way some of the data is coming in. And I, you know, I don't want to overhype it, but I also don't want to downplay it either. Damaging winds are also the biggest. Uh, I, I think it's maybe a little bit deceiving, but I think damaging winds are still probably our biggest concern along with flooding. Hail, I don't really see as a big problem with these. These will be pretty much low top storms. And actually, if you look at radar tomorrow, it may even deceive you. As you, and you look at it and you say, well, how could that potentially uh, be severe? It just doesn't look severe. But uh, tomorrow may be one of those days where 
looks can be deceiving on radar. So let's just time this all out. Let's take a look at the four kilometer NAM and what it says on its on its future radar product here. And so we'll go through today. And um, if the thing will ever catch up here, we'll, we'll get an idea of this. And um, hold on, just let me refresh this. Sometimes, um, sometimes this site just uh, doesn't uh, do well unless you refresh it. Let it get back into memory. There we go. Now it's working again. You can see how this builds. Here we are Wednesday at 8 p.m. And so you so and you see we see some maybe isolated to scattered stuff for today, but not a whole lot of action. The action more comes along tonight, and you see we've got plenty of it to come through tonight. Then we get into Thursday, and you notice a pretty big, healthy complex of storms approaching us from the west. Here we are at 5 a.m. on Thursday morning, and uh, these storms start to overtake the area. So it will rain uh, the way things look right now a pretty good part of the day. And under normal circumstances, we would say, well, that ought to cut down on the severe weather threat. But uh, no, tomorrow is just an exception to that general rule of thumb uh, because the dynamics are going to be so high that, that even even raining down the atmosphere uh, may not help us as far as, as that goes time it out a little bit further you can eventually see here we are at 2 p.m. and you've got a fairly uh, healthy dose of of some thunderstorms moving through but I don't believe this is severe yet you move further in time by five o'clock you've still got a decent amount of rain around in the area and by the way most trick-or-treaters are going to be starting at five or six o'clock all the way until about eight o'clock so uh, a potential wet time for them it does give us a little bit of a break in the action sometime around six or seven so that may bode well if it holds out but I still think it's a gamble and maybe safer to to postpone trick-or-treating uh, for that reason but by the time 8 p.m. rolls around I want you to notice that we have a pretty decent little line of storms setting out here, uh, setting up just to our west. And uh, um, this is what's uh, going to concern us more. The cold front uh, by this time, when the low pressure is well up here out of the picture, but the cold front is, is more like this. And then you have a, uh, a broken line of storms at least extending a little bit beyond that. Um, and, and that will be the particular question that we have um, as far as how severe this line will be. But that will be the one, I believe, that will give us our best shot at severe weather. Uh, a couple of other particular radar views. Here we are, are on Thursday at 8 p.m. as well. And you see uh, on the, on the uh, NMM, or a future radar, it, it's timing it out a little bit later the, with the main line of storms still out to our west, but plenty of rain still around. And if you go on the same timeline with the ARW, you get a fairly healthy line of storms here as well on this one with more scattered nature out in here. But again, it's a little bit later before that particular line comes through. So uh, that's several different future radar views for you. And, and again, the timing is something that's going to be have to work out of this. Maybe it speeds up a little bit. Maybe it slows down. But I think in general, anytime after 4 p.m. is whenever we can expect to really see the dynamics come in here and play where we could get something going on. So let's just take a look at the NAM model. The NAM uh, is a little bit lower resolution than this four kilometer NAM high resolution that I showed you. But I want to take a look at the dynamics in play behind this. And so here we are at 8 p.m. and this would be about the time that line is nearing us. So let's just get an idea of what we were doing. Uh, instability, as I noted the past few days, was sort of the big uh, question mark of whether we could get any instability with this or not. You notice now the models are starting to show a little bit of instability. Now, maybe not a whole particular lot of instability, but some nonetheless. And so the first gray shading is at least 250 units of instability here. And uh, that is more than enough to get storms firing in a, uh, in a situation where we have these uh, strong upper level dynamics in play and this particular time of the year. Now, if this were uh, summertime, <coughs> excuse me, uh, maybe 2,000, 3,000 units might be more what we need. Uh, but the reality is 250, even to 5 or 750, uh, may be more than enough to fire something this particular time of the year. And really, it could be even less than that. But point being, there is a little bit of instability in play around the time that this squall line is coming through. Now, if you combine that with our low-level jet, uh, up about 5,000 feet, and you notice it's, it's ramping up 60, 70 knots over us. That translates to 70, 80 miles an hour, not 5,000 feet up into the atmosphere. Um, that's particularly strong. And what's even more concerning to me is if you go down and, uh, to 925 millibars, which uh, essentially is a couple thousand or, or so feet, or maybe even a little less, up into the atmosphere, you've still got a 50 knot wind, which is probably, you know, 60 miles an hour or so by the time you do the translation. So uh, basically, all 
all the instability that we need would be for a thunderstorm to get elevated up to two or three thousand feet into the air and uh, we're tapping into some extremely strong winds at that level which can really fuel a storm and make it go severe really quickly and uh, you know what most storms that we have around here uh, go that like nothing I mean it's not uncommon for us to have a 30 40 thousand foot top storm uh, during the summertime this won't be a setup where we have that I think we're gonna see 10 to 20,000 kind of max these are going to be pretty much low top storms but with enough instability that's showing up in the models now yeah I think we could get something going on here so I'm very concerned about those wind gusts because once a storm reaches up and it taps into those wind gusts if it starts to draw those down to the ground we could have straight line wind damage really quickly and so we could easily be looking at 60 70 mile per hour plus wind gusts with some of these severe cells so this is not good and and some of the other parameters here if we just take a look at helicity storm relative felicity is a measure of spin in the atmosphere so we look at this to say could there be tornado development and I mean this is off the charts compared to what we would normally see this is 200 250 uh, units here of instability of uh, not instability but rather helicity spin in the atmosphere more than enough uh, if we go down to um, the EHI energy helicity index which is a, a good indication of tornadic development anything from one and above is pretty good for it and you see we're encroaching on 0.75 in parts of our area so that's a little bit concerning that's a little bit subpar but uh, enough to note that there is some there and combined with some of these other things um, that makes that gives me a, a little bit of a threat here so I mean dew points is certainly going to be warm enough tomorrow to do that we've certainly got the moisture surge and uh, as far as the jet stream goes my goodness oh yes with the jet stream we've got 120 or, or so knots worth of wind uh, above us to support these uh, these storms so bottom line is and, and one other thing I would take a look at is just the bulk shear product as well and uh, again 70 60 70 even 80 knots back here of, of bulk shear um, goodness that is more than supportive of severe weather you we want 30 or you know 35 knots and you're doing pretty good to get some severe weather we're double that uh, so bottom line is I do expect that we are going to see some severe weather tomorrow night I, I, I will be surprised if we don't see a few warnings is it going to be an outbreak at this point I'm not hundred percent sure about that I want to be careful about using that word it could be an outbreak but I'm not so sure that it's going to be yet but I do think we'll probably go underneath of a watch and I do think that we will have a few warnings out of this will it be tornado warnings I'm not completely confident about that but it would not surprise me but I do think we'll have some severe thunderstorm warnings out of this with some wind gusts I mean this is something that we want to take seriously I mean yeah I'm and even if you look at the euro model here and uh, if I go back out to this for the time that this would go through the euro models this particular depiction is a little bit more sensitive on the Cape and you see even 50 units 100 units a couple hundred units 300 units bottom line as this squall line rolls through there's going to be ample amounts of energy from the way things are looking right now and that was a question mark earlier on but it doesn't seem to be as much of a question mark at least to me at this point so uh, seven day forecast as you take a look at it we're warming up into the low 70s today uh, right now it's in the mid 60s and um, I think I think 70 to 72 is obtainable for most of us tomorrow will be the biggest day to worry about again we, we have some showers and thunderstorms scattered around today but mainly more towards this evening I think it'll just be a gray gloomy day otherwise 61 for a high tomorrow mostly cloudy with those thunderstorms likely again south winds gusting up to 35 maybe even 40 miles per hour just on their own with sustained winds maybe even up to 25 so it's just going to be a, a breezy day and then we got a pleasant day on Friday but then back into the 50s after that so a little bit of a cool down uh, coming towards us but not a whole lot of one from the way things look right now now as far as the long range is concerning uh, maybe I'll just real quickly do this and this will be for another video I don't really have time to get into that with you today but I'll just uh, show you kind of the long-range picture and we are still forecasting the, from the way things look a decent size cool down uh, later on towards mid-month and uh, in, in another video after all the severe weather threat has passed I'll go back into more of the long-range ideas to give you an idea of what to expect down uh, as far as down the line is concerned but uh, for the time being right now just understand that we've got a good shot at severe weather things are certainly playing out feel free to 
ask any questions you have on our Facebook page. Stay connected to us, and uh, we've got the tools, and I will keep you as up to date as I possibly can on this. More, more on this to come as things develop for Southern Indiana weather. I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great day, folks, and stay safe.